What's going on? <clears throat> What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another pre-market watch list here today. Uh, so thank you guys again for tuning in as always. Do appreciate it. <clears throat> so I'm sure many of you guys already have questions about the stock Yeco, Y-E-C-O. Uh, definitely going to be covering that today. It was a wild ride yesterday, pretty fun. So we're definitely gonna talk about it today. Um, I know a lot of people have some questions and also will be, oop, let me go back to uh, the screen. So also we'll be talking about it, uh, PTI. So those are really only two stocks, PTI and uh, Yeko that I'll be watching for the most part today. Um, good morning, good morning, good morning, Daniel. Good morning, Leuven, Leuven. <laughs> so, um, anyways, yesterday was a good day for trading uh, penny stocks, that is. Uh, we first noticed Yeko really in the first couple minutes of the day and then started trading at around $4 yesterday. Uh, so that was pretty fun. So anyways, with no further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so first thing I'll talk about here is the stock Yeko. All right, Y-E-C-O. Uh, let me get some of these older trend lines off. Okay, so today watching Yeko. Now, <clears throat> there's a lot of momentum behind it. It's up from a dollar sixty area to seventeen dollars and thirty cents was the high in after hours trading. So this stock is already up really, really big. Okay, now personally, it could move higher, but I already know for a fact that a lot of people are looking at shorting it. Usually after these massive runners go on a run, it's not likely that we see them go running for two days when they're this big. It happens every once in a while, and it might happen, <clears throat> but naturally, once they've run this much, they usually tend to come crashing down. So if any of you out there were considering or hoping to get in long on YECO, what's going on, Mr. Cornet? I see you there, my man. Uh, if any of you guys are planning on getting in long on YECO, yesterday was the day. Today is more of a risky day to be getting in long. Uh, I have a feeling that we're gonna see short sellers trying to take over on the stock. Um, so personally, for me, what I'm more or less watching today for uh, YECO is I'd rather see it I mean, I'll trade it. If it starts going long, yeah, I'll, I'll start trading it, right? Obviously. But I'm more set on the idea that we're going to be seeing this come down like that. And then there'll probably be a bounce somewhere around $8, maybe 9 possibly $11. Um, so we'll see, <clears throat> right? But again, a lot of the times these big runners like this naturally come down the next day. Sometimes they go for a two-day run, but it's it's not as likely. So playing the odds here would most likely be a short play. So for those of you watching it um, today, I would definitely watch for a short play. If you guys have shares to short, I don't personally. But if you did, I would watch it for a short play. Uh, a way that I would actually go about playing a short would be to you know see if it squeezes up towards uh, the pre-market and after hour resistance, and then maybe look to get short right there. Um, or just look for it to kind of pop up a little bit, and if it fails and starts to come down, then take a short. Uh, then any of these, these a good area to look to cover might be around 11, which was this previous resistance and chop zone from yesterday. That would probably be a good area or around this nine dollar area so it, it's going to be an interesting one today it's going to be super aggressive there's going to be it's going to move very fast the spreads are going to be from 10 to 20 cents on average so it's not going to be your easiest trader has a lot of range and and so if you're newer to trading uh this is a stock that it's best if you just most likely leave it alone like if you just got into trading you're better off just leaving this alone the risk personally is probably too high uh, i would say for you um so I, I wouldn't do it that's what i would say uh if you've been trading for a while you got the hang of things you've seen how mega runners can uh, play and and you know the kind of volatility involved along with the spread then you know go for it but if not i would probably just stay away
ECYT, for those of you uh, wondering about ECYT, don't trade it today. There's not going to be much for you. Um, if you look at the news, it's a buyout or it's a takeover deal for $24 a share. So the stock is currently priced accordingly to the company that is planning on coming in and taking them over. So um, chances are that's not going to have a lot of movement today. It'll probably just stay right around that $24 area. So yeah, ECYT, nope. Now, if you um, next stock is PTI. So I'll be watching PTI. Uh, they do have some positive news along with the price target raised to $9. Though I don't really care about the price target being raised to $9. It does also help, you know, because there are a lot of people that do go by price targets and they do think of it as, you know, maybe the stock could run that high. But if, if it is a price target of nine, I'd be surprised to see it hit $9 today. But, you know, there is some positive news surrounding the stocks. Um, about an upgrade let's see what else they had was it just yesterday yeah preliminary results for cystic fibrosis treatment are positive so it's got some positive news and it also had a price target raise and it's gapping up from about a dollar eighty two dollars to 377 so it's up pretty big so we're gonna be following this one today pretty closely um, see how it wants to act right now. It's just trending up pre-market and actually into a wedge pattern right now So we'll see how it wants to act. But personally if I were to trade this I'd want to see it uh, I want to see it pull back first, you know out of the gates Maybe do a red to green move or to see how it kind of consolidates and then maybe wants to go on a run But I do think PTI has some opportunity today um, So we'll check it out if you look at the yearly chart, you'll probably see it has some resistance somewhere so yeah, uh, PTI has resistance up at about $4.40. That would be the resistance from this previous support area. If it can break over that, we might see it up towards $5. I think that's possible to see today if it really grabs some legs. Those would be the really key resistance points on um, uh, PTI today. Or that, yeah, PTI. All right. If you believe if you believe uh, ECYT is gonna move, then um, by all means, uh, I wouldn't want to stop you from from trading it. I think you should definitely um, keep your eye on it. Then. Um. So those are the two stocks, right? We'll take a quick look at the market just so you can see where it's at. Um. So you know we've had a had a pretty good pretty good bounce on the market just yesterday and you know now it's or no it wasn't yesterday sorry two days ago so bounce you know it had a big sell-off and it's still kind of consolidating chop and so this could lead into another push to the upside wouldn't be surprised but um you know this isn't an, an ultra strong bounce from how much it dropped i mean that was a pretty good bounce but it could have gone a little bit more i'd say up towards the 283s 284s and it still didn't um you know, so you can watch it, but I'm not so set that the market's really ready to cover recover just yet. You know, so um, I do believe in the coming days to weeks, um, we're gonna see this drop down again towards uh, 270 because it need it. You know, if it wants to continue higher, it needs to put in a higher low. So don't think that uh, I would say don't think that the market's just gonna go straight back up from here at this point. You know, we have yet to actually have this come back down and put in a double bottom or a higher low to confirm that it maybe wants to stay up, right? This was just a move down followed by a move up, right? So we're just basically moving. Now, once it puts in some type of pattern, we can say that it might be trending, right? So right now the market's still, um, you know, still bearish, you know, in terms of needing to retest the previous lows or at least put in a higher low. Um, I couldn't tell you exactly why the weed sector is down, but again, you know, it's there's been a lot of hype. These stocks have ran like crazy for the past couple weeks. You know, everybody knew legalization was coming. Um, you know, did I know that all the stocks are going to sell off before um, before legalization day? You know, no, I didn't. Uh, personally, I thought they might keep going, right? Just like most people did. And, um, you know, once they sell off, you go, well, I mean, it makes sense. You know, everybody knew legalization was coming. Tons of news. 
um, already talking about it. People were already buying it up. So the stock's already got pumped up really good prior to that, already had been running. So, you know, I wouldn't um, think too much more uh, of it than that. TLRY is down, Cron's down. I mean, they're all basically down right now. Um, you know, so we'll see. CCLCADS. I'll take a quick look. Um, nope. Wait, or is it three C's? It's three C's. That's why. Um, CCCL. Yeah, it picked up from what 145. You know, it picked up pretty good, but it's still really light volume. I wouldn't be set on it. You can watch it, but very light volume for right now. Same thing with CADC. Wow, from that's nuts. From two all the way to a high of six. That's that wasn't a good move though. It's on super light volume. So you could watch it, but again, it's on very, very light volume, which is not easy to trade. So you could watch them, but I wouldn't be set on those two particularly. Let's see, Netflix, TROV from what I remember is too light on volume. Uh, yeah, TROV is like a barcode, I won't trade that. You can trade it if you like, um, I'm not saying it won't go up, but I just don't trade that because it looks like a barcode and those are usually not too much fun to trade. Netflix. Um, yeah, you know, a lot of people are thinking Netflix short because of the move that it had yesterday. Um, you know, which is basically what we said. We said we would not be surprised to see this give back a lot of its gains tomorrow in a short play. And that's basically what it did. So, you know, I'm actually watching it long. Um, I think there's going to be some continuation down, but I think later in the day, it's going to consolidate. So I'm just watching for this to fade all the way down back towards, you know, 340s, 350s maybe, and then I'll watch it for a bounce. That's what I'll probably do on Netflix. Uh, MNGA, everyone always asks about this one too, it seems like. Uh, MNGA won't trade that. It's like a barcode. So um, I don't personally trade that. Of course, so you can trade it. Um, but naturally speaking, in terms of day trading, um, if they don't, you know, when they look like barcodes, I don't trade them. They're usually not very fun to trade. Though on this day, it had some pretty good volatility, but, you know, personally, I usually don't trade many stocks below a dollar because they tend to look just like this one. So, you know, some people like trading them. I, I personally don't. So that's just kind of just my style, I guess you could say. But, uh, you know, there's really no way to make much money when it's like, if you look at this, right? there's really not a way to make any money easily while a stock does that. You could have held that for like 40 minutes to, you, know, you could have held this for three hours and made almost no money, just back and forth. Uh, I made quite a bit of money yesterday. So. Anyways, that is uh, that's all I have for you guys today this morning. Uh, that's the pre-market watch list. So hopefully uh, that helps you get guys decide what you guys are gonna trade. Um, hold on one second. I'll take a look at this last sock. Um, you could argue that IGT is a triple bottom, which, yeah, I could see it being a triple bottom. Um, as you can see though, for the past year, it's been on a downtrend. So if you want to trust that IGT is going to have a good earnings, uh, you know, you can do that. It's always a risky game holding, uh, being a trader and holding through earnings rather than an investor and in holding through earnings. So if you think they're going to have a good earnings, I could see there could be a potential triple bottom, but it did break through previous supports. So, um, I, I, you know, it, it could be a good play. I wouldn't, wouldn't deny it.
So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I have for you guys. I will see you guys all, um, yeah, see you guys all tomorrow morning for another pre-market watch list. All right, guys, take care.